Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a first-person shooter which hyper-focuses on raw mechanical talent and strategy. With a metropolis of in-game gun skins and a hugely popular marketplace for them, it's no wonder why so many people choose this game over many of its other competitors. Unfortunately, for players who want to show a bit more personality and taste inside of the game, there's another layer I've yet to mention. CSGO was released to the public on the 21st of August 2012, however not until August the 13th of the next year would they add skins. This was a great way for players to make their guns look so much more interesting and help their guns look different from other people's. But Valve thought something was missing. So 177 days later, the Community Sticker Capsule 1 was released and players loved it. This was a form of case in which people instead of unboxing a skin for their gun, could unbox a sticker that could be placed on top of a gun skin. A sticker could be applied to any skin in any of four set positions specific to each gun, and if a player wanted to remove it, they could simply scrape the sticker 10 times to do so, permanently deleting the sticker from existence and the player's inventory. This aspect allowed for an additional nine choices of wear customization per sticker on top of the four position choices on that weapon. Stickers would in time develop their own values, loosely determined by how good they looked and the rarities inside of the sticker capsules. Some were common and very cheap, while others were incredibly rare to unbox and had much higher prices because of this. Suddenly, CSGO's skin market went from an already thriving place where players could sell and buy gun skins to a booming subculture of the game. But it was only about to get even bigger. Valve would later release another community sticker capsule, which once again contained user-submitted designs from the Steam Workshop. However, it wasn't until CSGO's second major that our next curveball would be implemented. During the Katowice 2014 major, Valve decided to add a sticker capsule consisting of the tournament's attending teams. All of a sudden, players had been given another motive to buy and acquire these stickers. New holographic effects were added, and people could now represent and support their favourite esports teams through the applied stickers on their guns, once again giving players the opportunity to bleed more personality into their virtual loadout. Over the next year, contender capsules would continue being released for every single major tournament. Each tournament's stickers would vary in design, setting them apart from the previous collections. But as we know by now, a game developer like Valve knew when they had something good going, but also when it was time to go deeper down the rabbit hole. Enter ESL One Cologne 2015, CSGO's sixth major tournament. Now, up to this point, due to their continued return, it was clear to all players that team stickers were here to stay and would be added once again. However, what they weren't ready for was the additional capsules added alongside them. Autograph capsules were once again just like any other sticker capsule up to this point, but instead of containing illustrative designs or team logos, these contained stickers with the autographs of every single of the 100 attending players in that tournament. A person could choose to open a specific team's capsule, which would drop one of the five players from that team in a high grade or paper rarity or they could open the foil capsule, which could drop the exotic or foil variant, thus making them slightly harder to come by, and obviously the capsules more expensive. So now, a person could support their favorite player and their favorite team in their favorite spot, on their favorite skin, on their favorite weapon. Now the newer players as of today may not find this at all impressive. However, at the time, even I personally remember being absolutely outstanded by the fact that I could have Scream, Pasha Biceps, Olaf Meister scattered all over my favorite skins. The only thing from memory that's comparative to this in the outside world would be when a football fan buys a jersey with their specific favorite player's name on the back or their football boots designed and promoted by their favorite player. So once again, a new level of personalization to skins had been added through stickers.
Over the coming years, Valve would churn these stickers out for every respective major, each collection with its own unique designs and effects in conjunction to their own separate themed capsules that were permanently available in the store. However, there is something that I've purposefully not touched on yet about tournament stickers. After a major grand final had taken place, the stickers would eventually be permanently removed from the store. Now everyone was aware of this and it couldn't be further from a secret as Valve basically flaunted these last minute sales to the players trying to squeeze every last bit of money they could from the player base before removing them entirely. So why did I not mention this earlier? Well, just like the player base, a massive two years after team stickers had been initially added did people start to truly wake up to the fact that these had a limited supply. And not only this, but the supply would only ever go down as a result of people applying them to their gun skins. Essentially, these stickers were time capsules from an era gone by, where no one cared about slapping them on their gun skins or scraping them off and deleting them once they'd got bored. After all, no one really cared about scraping and deleting these stickers, as the large majority of them would only ever go for a few cents. But now years later, looking back on a tiny supply of an ever dwindling surplus, prices started to creep up. The allure of vintage stickers would continue to grow over the years, and so did their value, especially for one specific collection, Katowice 2014. These were widely considered to be the best looking team stickers ever added to CSGO, and the set with the smallest amount left due to being from an era where not many people played the game. And consequently, collectors were now willing to spend huge amounts of money just to acquire them. Currently, in June 2023, as of recording this documentary, the most expensive sticker from this collection sells for roughly 75,000 USD. Now remember, players were once trading and selling this sticker back in 2014 for $1 or less, and after nearly a decade, it's seen a 7,490,000% increase. But we're getting ahead of the timeline here, so let's jump back seven years to our next stop, to 2016. Between 2016 and 2017, a huge influx of players had made the skins and sticker market thrive once more, and with hundreds of thousands of new people in the scene, it was no surprise that things started to evolve regarding stickers too. The term sticker craft had started to become commonplace in the collecting scene, which was the name given to a specific arrangement of stickers on a skin. If a player had applied stickers to a gun, they had now crafted it, and so now that skin was considered a craft. For example, if a player had applied four Team Titan stickers to a hot rod, it was now a Titan or a hot rod craft. This meant that instead of skins just having stickers slapped on them for the sake of it, there was more care and thought going into the process. People started to realise that skins could be enhanced with stickers, and so different types of crafts started to be discovered. Crafts that emphasised a skin's colours, crafts that could enhance the themed loadout even further, and even crafts that could just be a transparent show of wealth. And because of this, the world of sticker crafting had truly been established. The next noteworthy evolution of stickers came in 2019. It was January 16th, and the Katowice Major was just around the corner. Tournament stickers and their capsules had been added, and everything was as usual until a few moments later when players started to notice a specific sticker in the Minor Challenges capsule. A professional player with the alias Dick Stacy had somehow managed to get this design approved by Valve, sending players into a comedic fit. A small minority of the player base considered Oliver Tierney's actions of getting this sticker added childish, but the majority of players found it absolutely hilarious and loved it. Mere minutes after its release though, players started to realise that they could arrange specific stickers around this sticker to create strings of hilarious but otherwise legible text. All of a sudden, a large number of people realised that they weren't just looking at thousands of player autographs anymore, they were looking at words, and they could create strings of text on their guns with said stickers. Uh, spray. Oh, on AK. Yeah. <laughs> That's good! That's good. 
and due to autograph stickers being pretty cheap compared to the other types, it meant that almost anyone with any budget could join in the fun. And in my opinion, this was the moment where sticker crafting had finally tapped into every single layer of the player base. And now, big floppy dick Doja. Holy sh- that's, that's the best, that's the best, right? Even people who had never been interested in applying stickers to their guns were having fun with this concept. Today, sticker crafts are considered by some to be even bigger than skins. This is thanks to collectors like Zipple and Onipixel bringing the higher tier side of sticker collecting into the limelight. But before this, for a few years, vintage stickers and certain skins had become so expensive and unobtainable that they had become out of the question for the average player. The newer tournament stickers had started to become ugly and cheap, and the older good looking stickers were far out of financial reach. Only hardcore collectors with insane budgets would have anything to do with them, so although not completely forgotten, sticker crafting had become somewhat of a taboo thing once again. But once these content creators started showing people behind the curtain of high tech collecting, eyes were back on stickers. People were starting to remember crafting with these things years ago, and were fascinated at how rare and elusive some of them had become. There was a new aspect to stickers that people had yet noticed, nostalgia. Everyone has their own intimate story with stickers it seems, even if they never specifically collected them back in the day. Although I remember 15 year old me owning a blue laminate AK and trying my best to struggle my way out of silver with it, when I see one of these skins now, it doesn't really do much for me in terms of nostalgia. However, when I see a tournament sticker from that same year, I have such a different reaction. It triggers so many more memories for me. When looking at these Cologne 2015 stickers, I vividly remember being midway through high school. I remember being on my summer break and hearing about this strange tournament called a major from my mates and then tuning in on Twitch to watch it that very next day. I remember seeing that famous five man Fnatic AWP play against Envious in the grand final live and still being new to the game so not quite understanding how insane it really was but still laughing and cheering with my mates about it in a Skype call. When I see this Astralis sticker from Atlanta 2017 it's not just a sticker in a video game, it's a time capsule to when I first started supporting them. And then I think about the journey that supporting Astralis has taken me down since, because of watching that very tournament and applying that sticker so many times to my weapons back in the day. I guarantee you there are people watching this video that have the same influx of memories when looking at these stickers. And that for me is just something that Gunskins will never be able to do as much as stickers. CSGO is and always will be one of the greatest games of all time. Not just for sustaining millions of active players for over 10 years or its world class esports circuit, but for being the game which created the most advanced and intricate marketplace and trading system ever in gaming history. Going off of everything that's happening currently, it seems that digital items will be a thing of the future. And when we grow old and grey, whenever that may be for us, we can proudly tell our friends, kids, and even grandkids that we were all there at the start of it all. We played CSGO.